What's up, guys? I'm Turbo John. I appreciate y'all watching. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. So today we're going to talk about degreeing a camshaft. What all is involved? Check it out. Okay, so now we're going to actually degree the camshaft real fast. So it's pretty easy. So this is a handy dandy tool. Um, another real simple tool. This is a universal dial indicator that rides on the cam. And this little piece down here, it just goes down in the lifter bore. And all you do is uh, slide it down in there and then it's adjustable to, to make it so that it's tight so that it rides around you. So all you do is I'm gonna get in here. So now I'm gonna back it up. So, cause I know it, I'm, look, I'm doing the intake center line. So we gotta keep, I'm gonna turn this down. It's gonna go down for quite a ways. I'm gonna go until it, the, the dial indicator stops. Circle, we're on the base circle of that lobe. Now something very important, y'all tighten this up and, and realistically, this number right now doesn't really matter. So right now, I am turning the motor counterclockwise and it's on the base circle. See how it stopped moving. So now what I'm gonna do, so I want to find the lobe of the camshaft is elliptical. So it comes up and goes down like this. So this point here is where I want to find the 100% intake, intake center line in degrees on the crankshaft. So if this is up like this, and there again, it rides across this dwell. So you can't 100% just go, this is peak lift here. You have to go on the back side and on the front side. So it's the exact same way that I just found top dead center. Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Now we're coming up. So we're it's still going around. Man, that's a big camshaft. What the hell? Okay, so you see it started back going back down. So I'm gonna back it back up a little bit. So now I'm on the, the lobe coming up. So we're gonna just stop it. It looks like it stops right close to where my marker is. So I'm gonna loosen this up and I'm gonna turn this just so that I get my zero. So now I know, let's see, I went just a little further. This is where you want to be there again, very precise. Take your time. So that is, that was right on peak, wasn't it? Very close. Okay, so back again. I would say that is peak. You see, I'm still turning it, but it's just started going back down. Okay, so now I'm gonna do it at 50 thousandths. So that's generally what you use. You can do now. I am sixty thousandths before it starts coming up. So I want to there again. You want to take out the slack. So I'm gonna hit it very slow. So now I'm hitting it slow, and that's fifty right there within a half a degree. That's fifty right there. So now I'm gonna take this measurement on my on my wheel. So it's seventy. So this is pretty simple. So 70 is easy. Jot it down if you can't remember. So 70. Okay, so now we're going over. And so this is still going over on the, when you look at the degree wheel, we're going over. So we're going over. So now we're at maximum point. So we're gonna keep going. And so now we need to go back down 50 again. And you can see, looking at this, we've moved. It was on 70 earlier, and so we're already up here at 132. So now we're going going back to 50. We're almost there. If you can go in a slow, deliberate motion. It makes it a little easier, but if you stop, then it makes it more difficult, like I just did. You see, I went by it. So now I need to back it up so I can take out the slack in the timing chain, or timing belt in this case. Ah, and every time you, that's exactly what happens. You get close and then it just blasts by it. It's never ending. It can't ever go smooth. Look, it did it again. Look. Okay. If it does it again, then I'll just back it up again. <laughs> Look. <laughs> He's doing it every single time. That must be a, um, that must be a fast spot on the block. Must have a little extra 
assembly lube. Not really. Okay, now I'm starting to get irritated. And I'm, I promise you, I'm not doing it on purpose. This is why you, look, this is why you have to write it down to other number, because if you run into this, you could forget. I thought it was gonna go so effortlessly. Okay, let's go. If you put tension on your wrench as you bump it too, then that sometimes makes it. Is this thing under compression stroke or something? Why is it? You now sometimes it just bumps by. Okay, are we there? That's also close. You want to bet if it's going to stop? How close is it? That is really close. I'm getting old. That's within a half a degree. Well, we're a half a degree off anyway a minute ago. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to take this number, what we have here. So we're at one. Man, you can see this thing is beat up. We've used this thing a lot. So this is 145, 146, 140, 147 and a half. So now, take your handy dandy calculator. So you just add those two numbers together. 147.5 plus 70 equals 217.5 divided by two is 108, 108.75. So I'm gonna do it again just to verify. And this one will go a little bit faster. So I'm going back, a little bit past 50. So now we're on 50 again. I'm on 71, so I'm pretty close there, 71. At max lift and going back down. 71. I'm gonna go ahead and bump it and I bump by, by it again. What in the world? I don't understand. So 71. 71 plus 148. 71 and 148. Let's see what we got. 71 plus 148. 219 divided by 2. 109.5. Let's try it one more time. I thought it was 107. I thought it was 108. 70 and one something. <laughs> That's why you're supposed to write this stuff down. Which clearly are not doing. So this one is going to be the tiebreaker. So I'm going to average it. There again, I'm not perfect. I'm just trying to get it as close as I can. And I don't know how close professional engine builders get it. There again, I'm, I'm like dead on 71. So 71 is consistent, 70, 71, 71 is, I've got 71 twice now. So I'm gonna probably say 71 is the, the one that is the, the ticket. So this is the one that seems to be the, the one that is varying a little bit. And that's, it's because it's going right by it. And why is it going? That might be a spot on the camshaft that maybe is a little out around. Maybe it got hit with a, a broken connecting rod <laughs> i mean i don't know i mean this camshaft has been through um some hard times it has stuck around i'm very impressed okay uh that's that's dead on 50 and right now i'm at one 140 i would say that's 148 so 71 and 148 71 plus 148 equals 219 divided by 2, 109.5. Got it twice. So I'm going to say now the other one was 108 point something. I think it was 108.75 or 108.5. So 109.5 is what my intake center line is. Superb. I don't want it to be on 109.5. So I need to retard. I need to back the camshaft up just a little bit. So that's gonna be pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll this back to about right here. Um, so I'm gonna just simply, these four bolts that hold the cam sprocket together, I need to loosen those up and then I'll change it. So right now I'm saying this 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 is showing 
the camshaft is advanced uh, 10 degrees. So I want to back it up, but I know I've got a good starting point. I'm going to write these numbers down. I'm going to take a screenshot. This is 109.5 with it fully advanced. And I'll take a screenshot and I'll write on it. And so now I'm just going to move it. I'm going to retard the camshaft. All right, guys, stick with me. I'm almost done. So when you've got this thing on the car, if you need to make a quick change at the track, when you loosen these bolts up, if you grab the crankshaft and you turn it, the valve springs on the head are going to hold the camshaft. And so the camshaft's going to stay in place and it's going to allow this to move very easily. So since I don't have heads on it and I don't have valve springs, you know, and lifters in it, I've got to do it manually with a screwdriver and a little, little hammer. Um, but it's not too bad. So I've already hit it and I moved it close, I think. Maybe I got lucky and got it in, in one swipe. Um, so now I'm gonna just tighten these back up really quick and um, snug them up. And then once these are snugged up, then we'll um, you know, do the same thing we just done with trying to figure out if um, the intake center line is where I want it to be. And these do not have to be very tight at all. I mean, you want to snug it pretty good. And I'm going to snug three of them for the time being since the other one is kind of difficult to get to. I can do three since that's fairly close. So now we got three of these snugged up, so that's going to hold in the right spot. So then if I, I'm going to back up and start this process again. Okay, so, and if you look really close, if you did a minute ago, you can see that now those are two degree increments. So it was all the way to the left and now it's showing eight degrees. So now let's see if that matches up. That's what I was thinking. So now I'm watching the dial indicator on the, watching the dial indicator on the top. Okay, there goes my max again. So I'm gonna back it off. So I'm gonna go a little bit past the 50. So now I'm gonna get on the 50 again. On the 30, and I'm going to take the readings. Okay. So now I'm at a solid, it's not quite 72, 71 and a half. So we're at 71 and a half. So we're at our our peak again and then we're coming down and again we don't want to go by it if at all possible so you want to be very careful and then we bite again you see it jumping and that's just me being I guess I'm gonna get a little flitchy with it as I get close, because I'm doing it like every single time, which is actually kind of odd. And you could do this, I guess you could do it at 40. I mean, you don't have to do it at 50. I mean, so if that is a bad spot on the camshaft, I mean, it would, I mean, I could stop it. I could go a little bit past it, but I have to do it consistently every time. That's the key thing. Almost there. I don't know that I'm going to get it any closer. So I was at 71 and a half. So let's take out the handy dandy calculator again. 71.5 plus. Now I'm at one. That's a solid 149. 148. Uh, I'm going to say 
I know that's it's not quite in it's not quite on the 149 it's definitely not on 148 so it's on the on the film it, you, can, you can see it you can see it's not quite there so we're going to add those two together 220.25 divided by 2 divided by 2 equals 110.125 so now I'm at 110.125. So I moved it two degrees up there. What appears to be two degrees, but I guess it was not quite two degrees. But that's how you degree a camshaft. The camshaft is advanced. It's going to be a lot more torquey down low. Um, if it is more retarded it's going to be more high rpm you know one degree is probably going to be hard to see a difference uh, a couple degrees definitely makes a difference it makes a huge difference four degrees makes a huge difference i mean like a really big difference i'm gonna torque these four bowls down go ahead and get this uh tidied back up so that is how you degree a camshaft in my world there may be other ways to do it but to me that is the easiest and least time consuming way even though it does take you about 30 minutes it's not too bad so uh, y'all make sure you degree it. If you buy a timing set or if you have a timing set that's got dot to dot and it does not have any adjustability, you can degree it, you can spend the time doing it, but the reality is, is most likely you can't do anything about it. And at that point, I'll start worrying about how can I make something adjustable so that I can degree it. So uh, you gotta go with what you got. And uh, if you ain't got what you need to make it work, you gotta get it. And hopefully you can find it used. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all following along. Y'all be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Go fast, get wind lights. Thanks for watching.